Um, okay, like as we discussed, so this is an initialization. This uh, table one above is showing about the initialization of the network based on the slack bus V and delta is given, and P and Q is unknown parameters will be find at the end of the load flow. And for generator bus P and V is assumed, and Q and delta will be calculated. For load bus P and Q is assumed is given value, and the V and delta is unknown. We are able to find out. So based on that, we if you write it down here for the bus two, which is your load bus. Uh, so we can see here we trying to assume for the load bus because remember for the load bus we don't know what is the V and delta, but we assuming your V is one and the delta is equal to zero. What is this assumption meaning? It means we are assuming the load is a pure resistive load so that it maintaining one and angle of zero degree, but that is not the reality because in order to start the load flow, this is a base assumption we made in. But at the end of the load flow, we able to know what is exact voltage and uh, phase angle for the load bus uh, irrespective of the assumption. And then for delta three, you remember your bus three will be your bus three, which is your a PV generator and for the PV generator, we don't know what is the phase shift of the uh, what is the phase shift of the phase shift angle for the voltage in bus three, but we are assuming as delta three equal to zero. So based on this, what we're trying to do, we're looking at your voltage and the phase angle because our slag bus is not fast fitting in this case. That's why we're not taking slag bus. Only we're taking generator bus and load bus and generator bus. We can see uh, for the load bus V2 and delta 2 are assumed and for the uh, generator bus delta 3 is assumed. And then from the given parameters for, for the load bus and then the generator bus, we only concentrating on P and Q. So for the load bus, we do know the initialization of P2 and Q2 and for the generator bus, the P3 is there. So what we need to do is, so these are the things. So what we need to do, we have to um do our partial derivation of p2 v2 and q2 delta 2 and the same thing we need to do here the partial derivation of p3 delta 3 and b3 delta 3 in order to find out <coughs> your jacobian matrices for this element and to follow with the first iteration of the newton ramsey load flow so now you get a better picture why we are doing the partial derivation of the jacobian by p2 uh, versus v2 and Q2 versus delta 2, and P3 versus delta 3, and V3 versus delta 3. Because for this uh, three bus system, this is what the assumed load and voltages, which is acting on bus 2 and bus 3. Because of that case, we're doing the partial derivation with respect to these parameters. OK. So, but as we discussed in the previous step, so the main equation for us to the power flow equation, that is the main equation in order to consider to proceed with the newton raphson load flow. So in the initial part of the presentation, we did discuss the mathematical formulation of the real power and reactive power, which is given in equation 7a and 8a. So we can see your 7a and 8a, your real and reactive powers. And what we're trying to do, we, we have to, um, find out what is your P2, P3, and Q2. Why we specifically finding out P2, Q2, Q3? With the help of equation 7A and 8A, if we're going back to the previous slide again, because in the previous slide, what are the powers is there? Is P2, Q2, and P3. So we have to find out this initial powers value, right? By using the power flow equation of the real and reactive power, which is 7A and 8A. So that's what we have P2. So what you're doing in this case, your I is replaced by two. So you can see P is equal to two and VI equal to two because I, I, two, two means is two squared V two squared and Y two, two and cos of theta two, two and summation K is equal to one to N, K is not equal to I to N and we recreate this equation. That means your I is equal to two and K is equal to one in the first case. And the second case, your i is equal to your i is equal to two, and k is not equal to i. It means k cannot be two, and k can be three. And we form it in this equation. And the same thing we do it for p three. It means we are supplying your i is equal to three, and that's what this term is coming. I is equal to three if you substitute here, you're getting this term. 
and from this term your i is equal to 3 and k is equal to 1 and the second condition your i is equal to 3 and k is equal to 2 so you're getting equation 3 and then the next one your q2 so for q2 again your i is equal to 2 we substitute on this equation which is 8a in this equation we substitute i is equal to 2 and we get this first term here and here i is equal to 2 and k is equal to 1 we get this term and the next term i is equal to 2 and k is equal to not equal to i so it means k is equal to 3 then we get in this equation again there is a mistake it's supposed to be 1 2 3 equation number this equation number is supposed to be 2 but uh, for this case so from from equation 1 we know what is our v2 y22 and cos theta 2 because y22 and cos theta 2 what you can do is you can go here and this is y11 y12 y13 this is y21 y22 and the phase angle it means this is your y22 and this is a theta 22 so you can see your y22 and theta 22 you can substitute that values there and v2 we in the previous slide we did assumed what is v2 and uh, v3 values and the phase angle as well so you can substitute all the values here and we can able to see what is your p2 and p3 and q2 as well uh, i think i given a detailed step of this substitution values in the next slide so as i mentioned you can see the detail the substitution that is given in this slide so when the previous equation we see this is the first equation and here your v2 because the v2 remember we assumed here v2 equal to one angle of zero degree so you can get one and y22 is coming from here 58.1 is here and cos of theta t2 that is this angle minus 63 something like that and v22 is there and v1 you can see v1 is 1.05 that is there and cos of theta t1 plus delta 1 minus delta 2 so all the values is here is given and then the one mass matrix so i did substitute the values and managed to prove what is your p2 value and p3 value and q2 value but this slide uh, by the amendments i worked on the slide so that i can show the detail for the first step of iterations how we calculated your p1 p2 and q2 this is also part of your amendments but I'm not going to go into details the substitution because the detail step already I did it and the results is there for you, okay, for your observation. Any questions on this slide? Okay, if not, I move on. So from that case, uh, the initial values we find out so what you need to do is we need to find out the change in value the change in value is written at delta value which is equal to given value minus appropriate value so the given value remember your load bus 2 for your bus 2 is a load bus it is 400 megawatt and 250 megawatt so the initial value is minus but is 400 megawatt you can see minus 4 and then the delta that is a change in value is getting we calculated from the previous step which is minus of minus 1.4 so we're getting uh, the value delta 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 p2 we're getting minus 2.860 and then the same thing for generator 3 is your pv generator and the given uh, real power for the pv generator is a 200 megawatt and per unit is 2 so you can see the p3 is a scheduled one you can see 2 and p3 which is our calculated one from the previous one, which is minus 0.6 and which is equivalent to 1.4384. Again, I'm not sure if you're going to ask me why this is a minus sign for 404, because this minus sign is representing, is not a generator, is a load. So this thing is observing the power, is not generating the power. That's why this P2, P2 is a load, bus 2 is a load bus of 400 megawatt. So that's why the load power will denoted as negative sign here. And then the reactive power, again, you remember the reactive power is also the load reactive power. That is a Q to minus 250 megawatt. That's why it's written minus 2.5. And the change in reactive power from the previous slide, we calculated 2.85 and equating, we're getting this one. So from this, we can see our delta P2, delta P3 and delta Q2 as this one. And this is not a converged value. 
So we need to do the second set of iteration and find out the Jacobian matrix, uh, find out for the first set of iteration and find the Jacobian matrix and go for the second set of iteration until the solution is converged. So the next step we're gonna uh, uh, we're gonna able to find out the Jacobian matrix. It means we need to find out the elements of the Jacobian matrix by using the partial derivatives for the real and reactive power. Any questions from this slide? Okay, I didn't get anything. So let's go on to the next slide. So in this slide, um, so you, I just given the equation one because you remember we have equation one, two, three. Um, equation one is your P2 and equation three, two is your P3 and equation three is your Q3. So what we need to do, we have to do the partial derivation P2 versus delta two and P2 versus delta, delta two and delta, that is P2 versus delta two, delta three and V2. So we partial derivation of this equation one with respect to delta two. Delta two means the first term, there is no delta two, this is cancer. And the second term, there is a delta two, but this is a cos and the cos, if you differentiate, it becomes a minus sign and this minus is also there. So what you becoming, you becoming sign of this term. And then the second one, um, delta two in the third term, in the delta two is negative here. So again, in the negative, uh, it become minus one and the cos, if you partial differentiate is minus sign and this negative and this thing will change to positive. So we have this thing, this term, uh, V2, V3, Y2, 3 sign of uh, the same uh, in the bracket, the angle that is coming as it is. So the next step, we have to differentiate again the first equation with respect to delta two. With respect to delta two, so there is no delta two and A is this delta two. If this delta two, what you can do is one and then the sign become, uh, this is a minus one and the sign become, uh, sorry, the cos become minus sign. So that's what you're looking at here. So we're writing V two, V three and sign of two, theta two, three and delta three minus delta two. And then we go in, oh, I'm sorry. I think this term will become zero because there is no delta three. I'm right. Because we want to do di partial differentiation P2 versus delta three. There is no delta three here. So this term will become zero and this term will become zero. Only this term, there's a delta three is involved. If this delta three become one and cos become minus sign, that's why this minus of this term is coming. Are you with me? And then we differentiate the same equation P2 equation one with respect to V2. If you differentiate with V2, this is two V squared is uh, V squared equal to two V2 and the term is coming and here the V2 become one and this term is coming as it is. And here the V2 become one and this term is coming. So this is a partial derivation of delta P2 delta two, P2 delta three and P2 with delta V2. The next step, we have a P3 equation and we do the same partial derivation of delta two, delta three and V2. And it is given here, yeah, I'm not gonna go into the details, but you will be able to check it out. And for Q2, uh, the Q2 equation is given from equation three and this Q2 equation must be partial derivation with respect to uh, Q2 versus delta two and then Q2 versus delta three and Q2 versus V2. But I'm only gonna do it for the first one, Q2 versus delta two. For delta two, there's no term here, so this becomes zero. And the second one, there is a delta two, this is a minus and the minus become uh, minus one and the sign become cos, okay? So uh, sign become cos. So what is happening here? So this minus, this minus become plus and this sign become cos. So V2, V1, Y1, 2, cos of theta one plus delta one minus delta two. And the last term, if you look your delta two, again, the delta two become this to be minus one and this minus minus is, is plus and sign become cos partial derivation. So V2, V3 and this term as it is. So the same thing they do for delta delta Q2 as a delta delta three and delta Q2 as a delta V2. And finally, we're writing our Jacobian matrix. That means 
your initial change in power delta p2 delta p3 and delta q2 equal to your jacobian matrix j versus delta delta 2 and delta delta 3 and delta v3 and this values here which is what we found here we substituting these values because we need to substitute these values here for this one and this one and be able to find out i think i done this uh, the substitution in the next slides for clarity purpose and final equation is written like that but the detailed substitution and the answers we'll see on the following slides for each elements of a jacobian matrix can you see the first element of the jacobian matrix what you derived from the previous step so I apply the values and I calculated uh, for all the Jacobian elements here. For a couple of slides, this slide is uh, first three Jacobian matrix values. And then the next slide, the next three Jacobian matrix values. And the next slide, we'll see the final values because the next slide will see all the six Jacobian matrix. And finally, we calculated our change in values, your Q3, P1 and Q1. Is right. I think just step one step is missing. Okay, can I answer the question? Give me a few minutes. I think maybe there's something slide is slipping here. So this one, okay, we have your Jacobian matrix, last Jacobian matrix values, and then the next step, what you're doing. So we are again checking our delta 2, delta 3, and delta V2 using Grammar's rule. So what we're doing is uh, from the initialization, we already have delta delta 2 and delta delta 3 and delta V2. These are the values. And these values uh, calculated value. So what we're trying to do, we want to see our change in value because our delta 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 3 is initialization is 0. So we're getting zero plus this value is becoming and delta V2 we assumed as one and one plus this one. So we're able to find out. So it means our voltage at the load bus, this must be this one and the phase shift this one. And then the PV bus for the bus three, the phase shift is this one. So this is your first iteration value. So what they're saying is we now need to repeat step seven to nine iteratively until you obtain a clear solution for unknown differences as the zero. Normally we do it for two iteration, we then solve for the other unknown parameters. So it means we taking this as an initial value and going for the next iteration to solve the problem again. And in that case, you can see it here. So the delta delta two that we calculated from the previous step and then the changing tolerance value is given and we become this one. So this one, um, it's look like, because if you look at here, this one, the change in tolerance value that you put delta delta it becomes 0 0.000 and 0, 0.0 it means it looks like something 10 power minus 4 the change in negative value and if you're getting a value of tolerance value 10 power minus 4 or 10 power minus 3 minus 2 it means your solution is converged if i look at the previous step these values are not 10 power minus 4 if i going through the previous slides here can you see here so this one is 10 power minus 2, this power is 10 power minus 3, and this one is 10 power minus 2. So they are not all of them are 10 power minus 3. So it means the solution is not converged. I think one of you asked me why the solution is converged. We need to find out the change in delta delta value. The change in delta delta value must be 10 power minus 4 and above so that we can say the solution is converged. If the change in values is less than 10 power minus 4, in that case, the solution is not converged. And not only one, uh, the, all the three parameters, all the three unknown parameters, the delta delta 2, delta delta 3, and delta V2 must be in 10 power minus 4 in order to say the solution is converged. Like, yes, the last iteration, if you look at here, in the bracket, the delta delta, you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It means I can see this is 10 power minus 5. And this is also 10 power minus 5 and 10 power minus 5. Then it means all three values, your delta, 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 delta 3 and delta V3 are going in 10 power minus 3. So this is your final solution. And we can say the, solu the, the load flow solution is computized here. And once it is computed, then we should be able to calculate your Q2, P2 and Q1 and substituting the values what you get from the last iteration in order to get what is your 
uh, power flow solution. Someone asked me question the convergence aspect, but I did explain now. Is it clear? Uh, you have any further question? Uh, can you explain to me which aspect is not clear in this slide or the previous slide? You can unmute if you want. The tolerance, okay. So if you look at this tolerance here, what you're doing is, oh, sorry, the cars is coming up here. Yeah. I click. I don't know what I keep lines here. Um, let me get to the other slide, come back here. Oh. I don't know how to remove these ones. Okay, so are you speaking about this tolerance value? So what we're doing is in the previous step, if I'm going back here, in the previous step, what you're doing, your delta delta two, what is this one is this delta delta two, which is the change in phase angle for load bus. And this one change in phase angle for generator bus. And this one change in voltage for load bus, because these are the three unknown parameters we need to find out. So in that case, your change in um, phase angle for the load bus, we calculated from here, which is 0 0.04. So what you're doing, the initial value we assumed as zero and the calculated one is 0 0.04. So if you add together, we're getting this value. And the second one, your delta delta three, which is your, your phase angle for the PV bus, the generator bus. So for generator bus, we assume the angle is zero but the calculated one is 0 0.00718. And if you add this thing, you're getting at this value. And then the next one for the load bus, your change in voltage, delta V to zero equal to this one. But remember our voltage, we assume for the load bus as one per angle, one, one magnitude for load bus for initialization. So we're using that initial value one plus the calculated one is V to zero this one. So if you're getting is the tolerance, the, the value become V2 become 0.9. At the end of the first iteration, it become 0.97345. So this is a solution, your delta, delta 2, delta, delta 3, and delta V2 at the end of first iteration. By looking at the solution of the first iteration, we need to see if this solution are converged or not converged. So when you're looking at this thing, what you need to do, we look at this one, that is the calculated one here. You can see the delta, delta value. And this calculated one, which must be always in 10 power minus four. But what is this one minus 0 0.04? This is 10 power minus two. And this one is 10 power minus seven. And this one is 10 power minus two. So they are not on the same 10 power minus four. And because if you see convergence, the delta delta values must be very negligible value in terms of 10 power minus four, 10 power minus five. Because if you speak 0 0.0001, R0 is simply the same. But again, if you speak 0 0.01, which is not equal to 0 because it's only two decimals or one decimals away from the 0. You understand? So according to the, even in the MATLAB and Dixieland also, I can show you where the tolerance are assumed. The tolerance are usually assumed as 10 power minus 4 or 10 power minus 5. So what we're trying to see, we see in this case that the one we calculated delta, delta, delta 3 and delta V2. This must be 10 power minus 4, all of them. Then the solution will be converged. So that's why at the end of the first iteration, by looking at this thing, not all of them are 10 power minus 4. It means the solution is not converged. We have to repeat the step 7 to 9 and to go for a next iteration to calculate a new set of delta delta 2, delta delta 3, and delta V2 and check that new solutions are become a negligible tolerance value 10 power minus 4, and therefore we become the solution. We can come to a conclusion the solution is converged. So, by going to the next slide, in the next slide, you can see by repeating the step 7 to 9, 
be able to calculate a new delta delta in that case the new delta delta that they calculated this is a old one that is calculated from the previous step and the new one they calculated here yeah, you can see it is a very tolerance value you can see before the 38 is starting how many zeros are there one two three four five one two three four five it means we can write this one minus 3.8 into 10 power 6 and this one i can write minus 2.4 into 10 power minus 6 and this one i can write minus 4.4 into 10 power minus 6 and all of them is written 10 power minus 6 and this if it comes like this 10 power 4 and above it means these are converged so the solutions after substituting this thing the value you're getting these are the converged solution it means your load bus because of 400 megawatt and 250 megawatt acting on bus 2 the voltage is not maintaining one per unit that is assumption but the actual voltage is going to be lagged down up to 0.97168. So that is how we come to a conclusion. The load flow solution are converged based on the uh, convergence limit here. The convergence limit in the software also you prefer define is 10 power minus 4 or 10 power minus 5, 10 power minus 6 so that the load flow iteration will repeat until we get the tolerance value to be met. Uh, I'm not sure if this is clear. Yes, for every iteration, because step seven to nine, you have to repeat. For second iteration, we have to repeat step seven to nine. All right, so once we get the tolerance value reached, and then this is your values, and from that, we should be able to find, be able to find out your P2 uh, your Q1, Q3, and P1 by using that equation that we spoke earlier uh, is written here 4, 5, 6. So you substitute the values with the help of the last iteration value we calculated and we find out what is your P1, Q1, and Q3. Yeah, that's what the example of the Newton Raphson for the three bus case system we discussed. But one thing I can tell you from these amended slides, I tried to give much more explanation and add a more slides and more steps so that you're given a more detailed explanation about the first iteration solution how we reached. And the next part of the presentation, I like quickly compare this theoretical solution versus the MATLAB simulation results. But you know, MATLAB simulation results is part of your practical five i think so i'm right uh, i think practical four so if you look at these things here practical four so the same power system is model and this is a given the screen is blank is it from my side i can see maybe it's still loading for you because of the images Okay, I think for because of the images here, yeah, the data may be slow on your side is loading. Maybe in a few minutes it appears on your side. But others are confirming they can able to see the screen. I think it may be a poor network performance. <clears throat> okay, so what you're doing is this, in the next part of the section, we're comparing our MATLAB solutions versus the Amazon calculation. And remember, this is a system that you discussed and this is the initialization value. And the right side, this picture is given your simulating model of the network for this SLD diagram. And the load flow results is given in the next slide. So if you look at the load flow results, what I'm trying to do, I compare the MATLAB simulation load flow results versus your Anson calculation. In the Anson calculation in the previous slide, we have P1, Q1, and Q3. But you can see from the load flow from the MATLAB, I can get it like uh, for Q3, if you look at here, the Q3 is 146, but here is 1.46 per unit Anson calculation. And then the P1, um, here I'm comparing 2.218 in the MATLAB, and here the Anson calculation is 2.18. And then the Q1, if the error mark is going here, 1.407 point, and here 1.408. So basically, I'm trying to prove our MATLAB simulation results and the Anson calculation we done for this uh, same network with the same data 
is pretty much 99.9 percentage .9 close to the simulation results right so the next part of the section there is one tutorial problem but it's the same three bus network system but the only thing is the parameters is changing so you can see uh, but the bus aspect is look like the same your P, uh, bus one is a bus and yeah the bus number is changed previously this is a bus two load bus and this is a bus three generator bus now your bus two is a generator bus and bus three is a load bus and the values for the um, for the load bus you can see 5 plus j10 but previously is 4 plus 2.5 you know so the parameter configuration of the network is changed but the network configuration looks like the similar to the 3vs1 and then the line impedance they given the line length but the impedance per unit is also given so you have to multiply with respect to the kilometer to find out what is the actual line impedance for all the three lines and by doing all those things um, you can able to find out the low flow solution for this tutorial problem but uh, i have summary here for example if you formulate the admittance matrix the admittance matrix is given here in rectangular form and also in polar form and then the final low flow solution is also given here but i would suggest you solve the problem and and verify if the solutions are matching with the result that I presented it for this memo that is given for this tutorial problem. So at the end of the load flow, we should be able to find out your V1, your V2, and V3, and then your P plus JQ for bus 1, bus 2, and bus 3. We should be able to find out from the load flow if this makes sense, uh, the result that is given with your solution that you're going to compute. Yeah, then we come to the last part, which is the reference used for this presentation. Any queries? Any questions from your side for this power flow? Is it clear? It is one of the major important topic uh, in your course for power system three. So I try much uh, explained as much as possible and detailed steps how to formulate the Y bus matrix Jacobian and the, the first iteration to solve the solutions of the power flow. Um, there are a lot of textbooks available. You can refer it, but my presentation and the notes will be much um, enough for your preparation aspect of the GA. All right, if you don't have any questions, then I stop recording this video now.